What's up my hunger gringos? How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well and I hope you're eating well. Today we are going to be tackling a problem I think a lot of people face. We are going to talk about how to stop ordering out and cook more often. Let's do it. If you like fun, funny cooking videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you get a notification when I post a new episode every single week. So I'm here today at the beautiful Amor Perfecto here in Usaquen, Bogota, Colombia, sipping on a latte to talk to you about something that I think a lot of people struggle with. It's how to stop ordering out and eating out so much and cook at home. I think now more than ever in human history, and I don't mean that as an exaggeration, is it easier to order out and avoid cooking. See, when my parents were younger, if, if you wanted to not cook, you could maybe order takeout from a Chinese restaurant or uh, order a pizza at your house, and that's about it. Now, we can open up an app, go to Uber Eats, and get whatever kind of food we want anywhere in the city. But this is a huge problem because when you're ordering out, you're spending money that you don't have to spend and consuming calories that you really shouldn't be consuming. So have you ever been looking at the scale or looking at your bank account and think, man, I really need to start cooking more often. Well, we're gonna go through all the reasons that you're not cooking more often and what to do about them. So I think the number one reason people don't cook is because they think they don't have enough time. Not that they don't have enough time, that they think they do, and this is an important distinction. So to illustrate this point, let me set up a scenario that's probably happened to you before. Have you ever had a friend who is really into a person, right? And every time they try to set up a date or hang out with them or whatever, the other person says, oh, I'm too busy. I, I, you know, I got this work thing or, you know, I really need to wash my hair. I think that excuse is like from the 1950s. And they say to you, man, I really want to hang out with this person, but God, they just seem so busy. It's really unlucky that I fell in love with a person that's busy all the time. And you just think, oh, honey, they're just not that into you. Because the fact is that if they wanted to hang out with your friend, they would have made the time. You think that if Ryan Gosling or Scarlett Johansson or whatever their favorite celebrity was tried to set up a date with them, they'd say, oh, I gotta, I gotta go get drinks after work with this person that I promised a week ago? No, they would clear their schedule, leave work early, and go to hang out with their celebrity crush. And that's the thing, if we wanna do something, we'll make time for it. You can always make time. There's always some time that you're spending that you could be spending on something else. Now, Sure, I mean, if you're the CEO of like a giant corporation, maybe you don't have enough time to cook. But let's be honest, how many people watching this video are Richard Branson? Unless you are Richard Branson, in which case, call me, let's hang out. Ugh, but at the end of a long day, thinking about what I'm gonna eat, going to the grocery store, coming back home, unloading, cooking, I can't do all that. Well, that brings me to my next point. You need to start menu planning. Look, I know menu planning sounds like very boring and unsexy, but once you start doing it, it will change your life. So I want you to do a little experiment for me. Go to your favorite coffee shop, like this one, grab a whole milk latte, and while you're leisurely sipping it, flip through your favorite recipe book or the recipe book that's just been sitting on the shelf collecting dust. Now, as you're flipping through the recipe book, I want you to take those tiny little post-it notes and put one down on a page every time you see a recipe that you like. Write down the name of the recipe on there for quick reference. Take the recipes that you found and then write down what day you're gonna cook them. Monday all the way through Friday. Once you did that, go look at the recipes, write down the ingredients on a grocery list, and then you're done. You just menu plan for the week. So what's great about menu planning is that not only do you know what you're gonna eat throughout the week, it means you only have to make one trip to the grocery store per week. And you might say, oh, I don't have time to sit around, sip lattes and menu plan. And to that I would respond, if you have enough time to make one last minute trip to the grocery store per week, you have enough time to menu plan. You see, menu planning takes like about an hour. And if that one hour of menu planning saves you one trip to the grocery store, it just paid for itself time-wise. And as a bonus, probably money-wise, because now you know exactly what you want at the grocery store, and you're not gonna spend a bunch of extra money on stuff that you're just gonna throw away at the end of the week. Think about it though. By the time you drive to the grocery store, find a parking space, park, get the thing you need, realize you need a bunch of other stuff, go back to get the shopping cart you should have gotten in the first place, find the right checkout line, and wait for that ancient person who probably remembers FDR's fireside chats to write a check to pay for their groceries. You'd have spent as much time as you would have spent menu planning. Another reason you're probably not cooking is because A, you're too ambitious, and or B, you're not realistic with what your energy levels are gonna be when you're cooking on a certain day. Look, we've all been there. We get to work, we're browsing through our phone, just had our morning coffee, 
full of energy and ambition. We see this awesome recipe for some ambitious thing and we think, man, I'm gonna make this tonight. And then you go to a bunch of meetings, you have a lunch meeting that gets changed so you gotta run across town. By the time dinner time comes around, you are so drained of energy that you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna order out or microwave this lean cuisine. But well, you gotta be realistic about what your energy levels are gonna be like when you're menu planning. Anytime I'm grocery shopping, I always make noodles because they're quick and they're super duper easy. Because even if I feel super enthused about what I'm gonna be cooking at the beginning of the day, I know that after grocery shopping and a long day of editing, I'm not gonna have the energy to cook anything but noodles. And look, we have days where un the unexpected happens, but for the most part, we can anticipate this. If you have a day that you know that you're gonna go to a million meetings across town, Maybe don't do a really labor intensive dish. But if you have one of those days where you know that your boss is not gonna be paying attention to what you're doing and you are gonna be spending all day on Facebook catching up on those cat videos that your mom sends you incessantly, is this a universal mom thing? I'm not sure, I digress. If you have one of those days where you're catching up on cat videos, then maybe that's the day that you try something that's a little bit more difficult and then you make twice as much of it so you know you're gonna have leftovers later on in the week when you have to go to a meeting with Bob who never stops using the word synergy and makes you wanna fall asleep in your chair by 11 a.m. By the way, if you have a different menu planning MO, let me know in the comments section below. I'm really curious how you guys plan your menus. The next reason you're not cooking is because you don't have those easy recipes on lock. Look, nobody's perfect. We're not gonna be able to plan out every single meal. Sometimes you're just gonna need to throw a few things together really, really quick. And that's why you need to have a few recipes that you know by heart that are gonna be super quick, super simple, and also super delicious. And no stoners, I'm not talking about wrapping up some pizza rolls in a frozen pizza, even though that does sound more enticing than I would like to admit. Now delicious is very important because you don't want these meals to be depressing because that way you might not eat them. I have an entire series devoted to taking those depressing meals and making them less sad. I'll link to it above and in the description. You need those recipes that are really quick and you can make from ingredients that you already have in the house. Well, if you only have ketchup and mustard in your fridge, well, I'll cover that in the next point. My go-to is Marcella Hazan's tomato sauce and spaghetti. The sauce is only canned tomatoes, butter, onion, and salt. It sounds too good to be true, but it's not, trust me, it's awesome. And it's good to just always have these recipes in your back pocket and always have those ingredients stocked in your house. Now you might say, an onion? Tomatoes just lying around my house? What do I look like, a Whole Foods? Well, that brings me to my next point of why you're not cooking at home. You don't have a stock pantry. You might say, well, wait a second, I've got a very stock pantry. I have like four different varieties of Chips Ahoy and like three flavors of Fritos. Well, that's not exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is, look, do you notice how in most recipes you see the same ingredients popping up over and over and over again? Like almost every recipe is gonna have some kind of fat like butter or olive oil or canola oil, some aromatics like onion or garlic, celery, carrots. Well, these are what you would call pantry items. And aside from being able to throw together some last minute recipes with a stock pantry, if you have all those staples in your house at all times, you don't really have to worry too much about it at the grocery store. I'm always gonna have olive oil in my house. I'm always gonna have a bunch of onions and I'm always gonna have some garlic. So if I wanna switch up a recipe at the last minute, I know I'm gonna have those basic components to rely on at all times. At the end of the day, if you have those ingredients in your pantry at all times, you don't have to worry about microwaving a lean cuisine when you didn't plan on eating it. And the last reason you're not cooking at home is because you're not putting your health first. Now look, I'm not judging here, okay? Pretty much everybody, except for like Olympic athletes, need to improve in this sector of their life. I am definitely guilty of this, and you would know that I'm guilty of this if you ever saw me with my shirt off. I love butter, I love food. Just like everyone else, I'm doing my best. But if you're never cooking at home, if you're always ordering out and eating out, this is really something that you need to think about. Look, I know it's hard. You got family, you got work. There's a new Star Wars movie coming out every week. You gotta kill the Batman. There's a million reasons that you don't have time to cook. But your health should always come first. And one of the most important components of your health is your diet. And that might mean saying no to that drink after work or not watching one more episode of The Crown or Westworld or whatever pop culture reference is relevant when you're watching this video. I'm gonna get a little dark for a second, but I'm kind of a dark dude, so just bear with me here. I'm not trying to freak you out or anything like that, but according to a recent study, in the year 2012, nearly half of all deaths due to cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, and stroke were due to diet. 
That's about 320,000 people taken from us too early because of a lifestyle change that they could have made. Now don't start having heart palpitations or anything. Maybe that was the wrong choice of words. Look, I'm not saying you're on the verge of death or anything like that if you don't menu plan, but what I am saying is that you can make a really drastic improvement to your life if you just found the time in your week to cook. And maybe it's not cooking five days a week, but hey, if you cook one more or two more days a week, that is a huge improvement to your life and to your health. Look, I know life is hectic, just try to find that extra time in your week to cook. Maybe don't watch one more episode of that Netflix show. Don't go out for drinks with Bob after work, because hey, he just talks about his fantasy football team the entire time anyway. But you can make a huge improvement to your life, and as a bonus, save a little bit of money if you use my tips to cook more during the week. And I also like to say, if you need any help cooking more, need recipe suggestions, just message me on any form of social media, links down below, leave a comment, email me, whatever. I'd be happy to help you personally. Oh, okay, that got a little too real. Here's a picture of my dog in a sweater. So what's holding you back from the kitchen? What's your go-to quick and easy meal? I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It was a great time hanging out with you this week. And until next time, this is The Hungry Gringo, signing off.